We are at Townie Meeting 2019 at Talking Sticks Resort on the Salt River Indian Reservation. And I am with two people from Quip. And we're with Elisa. Elisa Britton, who was born in Phoenix. Yes, I was born in Phoenix and live in New York now. I live in New York and with Chris Ellis. So I assume you're from Ellis Island and you're from Great Britain, <laughs> but yep. she's actually from Phoenix and you're from Dallas. Correct. But Correct. you're living in New York too. I am. Yeah, we both are. So um, Quip is the um, the biggest, hottest new thing in dentistry. The, the website is getquip.com. That's correct, yeah. Um, when I got out of school 30 years ago, it was um, the big thing um, at the time was a new electric toothbrush called Interplac. You guys probably weren't even born. I'm not familiar. I, I graduated middle school in 87. Were you alive? Were either of you alive in 87? Not quite. Oh, no. oh, okay. This seminar, <laughs> this podcast is over. I'm going to go. Could you bury me on the way home uh, from work? But it was, it was interplay. And that, that was the first new thing of going from manual brushing. And this interplay had these you know, rotating bristles. And in dental school, that, that was like Star Wars stuff. Yeah. I mean, Star Wars had just came out. And, and that was the new Star Wars. So it's even like a science-y name, like Interplac. Like yeah, Interplac. Intergalactic. Yeah. So, so now three decades later, the new thing is Quip. What, what is Get Quip and why, why did someone start something new? What, what, what is it? Yeah, so uh, Get Quip is an electric toothbrush subscription company. Um, our founder, CEO, Simon, he is an industrial designer and he went to- Simon Ennever. Simon Ennever. Simon Ennever. Yeah. Ennever. Yeah. He, uh, Who's also from Britain. He is from Who you're Britain. named after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's named from Britain. You're up in, this, this is a complicated story. Yeah. But um, he, so he's yeah. from England. So he's from England. He's an industrial designer and he went to uh, a, an office in Queens to go see his dentist and the dentist was complaining how more often than not patients just keep buying more and more expensive toothbrushes but really there's like the three things that they can do to really help their overall oral health is changing their brush heads out regularly brushing for two minutes and brushing twice a day and if they did those three things that that would have a huge impact on their okay, overall but here's oral the health. sad news about mm -hmm. this i'm 56 every house i've ever been in they don't know their toothbrush doesn't even work the bristles look like someone sat on them it's true and so you have an entire and i i've lectured in 50 countries i mean <laughs> i'd say on any given day 90 percent of all the toothbrushes on earth could not even remove any plaque all it could do is smear some toothpaste around how do we get people to realize that the tooth bristles have to be replaced. Well, I mean, that's a big part of it, right? So and I think that's kind of what helped Simon come to the realization, like after having gone to the dental office and kind of inquiring as to why do you, why do you think it is that patients aren't changing their brush head? Why aren't they brushing for two minutes and this kind of stuff? And he did his research and he worked with dentists to kind of essentially come up with the ADA recommended three month interval. And like that, that's what he kept coming up. He kept hearing that three months was about how long a toothbrush should be used, the toothbrush head. Um, and so that was kind of like part of the inspiration behind like the subscription part of it. And that's, you know, Quip's way of making sure patients are actually staying compliant and changing their brush heads out so that they aren't just smushing, you know, uh, toothpaste around their teeth, but actually cleaning them. So. Yeah. And what's <clears throat> also amazing is if the toothbrush is new and the bristles are straight, you don't even need any toothpaste. It's called dry brushing. So the, the research on removing plaque is brushing for two minutes. The only thing the toothpaste could do is um, bring fluoride to remineralize the tooth. It's got some other things. And of course, humans don't want bad breath, so they want uh, a freshy, minty, um, that kind of deal. But, but the, the most important thing is that the bristle is straight. And yet they think the most important thing is the toothpaste, what kind of toothpaste, what kind of mouthwash, and they, they skip out. In fact, I gotta tell you another interesting thing when you start looking at evidence-based dentistry, take Rella Christian, who's a registered hygienist, but she has a PhD in microbiology. She will show you there is no evidence that the six month cleaning has an impact on reducing disease missing and filled teeth. And then it's like, what? It doesn't even show up until you go to a three month cleaning. And at three month cleaning, you have massive evidence that this, this procedure reduces decayed, missing and filled teeth. And it's the same in the toothbrush. You, you, when you're brushing your teeth with a three to four month old toothbrush, you have no data to explain, you know, your kids are asking you, why do I gotta brush my teeth? 
well, you wouldn't have any evidence if they have a six month old toothbrush and the bristles look like the cat sat on it. <laughs> so getting people to realize, and then when people sit there and say, um, well, the insurance only pays six months. Well, let's say you didn't want to have any kids and you wanted a vasectomy, but the insurance only paid for a castration. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't care what your insurance pays for because we got 8 billion people on the planet and 7 billion of them don't have dental insurance. What matters is you and you need a fresh, clean toothbrush every three months. And I think it's interesting that um, your founder, the first thing he really was focusing on as an engineer, a design engineer, is that we got to get new fresh bristles every 90 days. Yeah, it's really important. Well, it, it's the most important part. Of it. You know what I mean? It, it's 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 like the most important part. Yeah, but it's not just enough. It's not just a matter of having access to the bristles too, because like patients could always buy brush heads whenever they want. But it's actually making sure that they change it, right? And so I think that's where the subscription part ties in so well, and like that's why it's resonated okay, so much explain, with their patients. Explain the details of the subscription part. So I'm yeah. on your website right now. It's mm -hmm. called Get Quip. Dot com. Yeah. And, and first of all, what what is where did the word Quip come from? Is that a British? <laughs> is that so, uh, English? What, what, what it, is Quip? I think it is. I think it does tie into the uh, the the British aspect of it. Uh, quip is like a quick jab or witty response, right? And I think the intent here is like. I, I did not know that. So yeah. I'm going to Google it. <laughs> definition. Definition. Quip. Yeah. And so the intent there, I think, is like really just to make sure that people are there able doing simple, quick things to improve their overall health. Quip. A clever. Usually taunting remark, a guy, <laughs> a witty or funny observation or response, usually made on the spur of the moment. Quibble, equiv so so it's a um, so you explain your words. A quip is a clever remark. So yeah, so get quip is a clever. It's like a, an easy way, like a, a quick and easy way to, to improve your overall oral health, right? Um, and I also think our founder really likes the the visual aesthetics of the quip, like the logo, the Q and the P. I think that had to tie into it as well. But uh, that's just my two cents. And another is something strange, eccentric, <laughs> an oddity, a quip. So if you go to getquip.com Mm -hmm. uh, what what do you find there? So yeah, I mean that's our website. So that's where patients like for the longest time, uh, Quip was purely direct to consumer. So that's where patients would go online to buy our web to buy uh, our toothbrushes and uh, subscribe to the service. So we we offer our our flagship product is our Quip electric toothbrush that they can get for forty dollars. We've got nice different colors in which they can choose from. We offer another toothbrush with a plastic handle for twenty five. Um, and patients can go to the website to purchase the, the brush and subscribe. And like, I guess, as we mentioned before, the subscription is every three months, they get a new brush head and a new AAA battery delivered for $5. So is this publicly traded? No, this is a private company. It's a privately company. Mm -hmm. Do they have an exit strategy? Do they plan on going public or do they want to hold that's, it? Or? I mean, that's a good question for Simon, I think. Because I noticed Wall Street loves the reoccurring revenue model. Mm -hmm. um, they, at one time, Netflix was as valuable as Disney, even though Disney had Disneyland, Disney World, theme parks, they on ESPN, ABC, what Wall Street loved was Netflix had gazillion people guaranteed to pay him 10 bucks every month. Mm -hmm. So that subscription revenue model, oh my God, does Wall Street love that. I don't care if you're <laughs> Spotify, Netflix, Amazon, the most valuable company. What do they have? They have the Amazon Prime where mm -hmm. they're dinging you credit card every single month. Now talk about the electric device more. Um, is it the bristle spin? Is a is there an ultrasonic vibration? Yeah, I'll let Elisa talk to that. She's our hygienist at Quip. So. Oh, so you're the hygienist? Yes, you yes. did not tell me that. No. You just told me you're born in Phoenix. <laughs> like, so oh you're my. you're not a hygienist. You're, you're marketing, hygienist. but you're a registered dental hygienist. Yes. Yeah. Where did you uh, Phoenix College? No, I went to NYU. So I was in New York for school. Um, I got my hygiene degree there and then I got my bachelor's there right after. Well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank and you. And you're born right here in downtown Phoenix in Arcadia. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It wasn't um, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt's from, or who, who was the, I David Spade. David Spade and I, um, Steven Spielberg is also oh, from cool. Arcadia. Yeah. Steven Spielberg was born in Phoenix? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> now wow. I'm second guessing that. Wow. I, I, I think he know. went to Arcadia High School. And the um, <laughs> and the Fleetwood Mac, um, mm -hmm. Stevie Nicks, Stevie and, Nicks yeah. um, and, and Lindsay Buckingham. So, so born in Arcadia, mm -hmm. where the programmer of Dentaltown 21 years ago, that's where he lives too. Wow. So cool. Dentaltown was made in Arcadia. Oh, cool. And then you moved to New York to go to hygiene school. How, yes. how does one get from Phoenix? 
Phoenix to New York? Were um, you lost? Did you make a wrong yeah. turn? <laughs> I love Arizona. I think it's one of the best places to live. Um, so I knew I wanted to end up here long term at some point. Um, so I really wanted something different. Um, and I've always loved the urban metropolis um, type of city like New York is. So I did my prerequisites here um, at Grand Canyon. And then I applied for their hygiene program. So I moved there when I was 18. Um, moved to New York. Yeah. So were you by yourself? Yes. <laughs> that's a, that speaks wonders yeah. you that you have. I mean, that, that's that's Christopher Columbus yeah. uh, to it was leave exciting. Phoenix at 18 and go to the largest yeah. city in the United States of America. Different. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was fun, though. I yeah. had a lot of fun. So you still live there? Yeah, I still live there. So I... I graduated with my bachelor's and I worked in Midtown for a little bit in New York as a hygienist. Then I moved back here, um, practiced in Arcadia for about two and a half years and then got my job with Quip. So I moved back to New York after that. So so what do, what is you as a hygienist? Mm -hmm. Why do you like Quip? I think Quip's mission is very... Um, speaks a lot to the hygiene mission, um, which is why I really like it. Quip is all about affordability and accessibility um, and is less about features and modes and different um, high tech options and just about habits. And that's really important. And that's something that I would really try to convey to my patients is I can give you the most expensive high tech brush out there, but if you're not using it the right way or using it consistently, um, it's not really going to help you at all. So Quip is very focused on building healthy habits. Um, so that's why I really um, love quip. Yeah. Well, they say if you want to change something big, you have to change something small every day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And if you, um, and, and I remember when I, when I was in school, one of the studies that used to just blow my mind was, um, identical twins. This one, yeah, they both had gum disease. Mm -hmm. Um, they both presented him with four quads of replaying keratage mm -hmm. and four quads of gum surgery. Mm -hmm. And one person, um, got the treatment didn't change any of their habits yeah. you know didn't brush didn't floss kept smoking drinking and yeah. being whatever the other one did not get the treatment but changed mm -hmm. all their habits of brushing and flossing mm -hmm. and cleaning and guess who was better off five years later the one who did the, not get the but yeah treatment. and yeah. it's the same thing with the bypass mm -hmm. i think I, I saw one study i think it was 86 different sets of identical twins mm -hmm. one because of insurance reasons wherever they lived around the world could get the um, coronary artery bypass graft for a hundred grand mm -hmm. the other person could not get the treatment but quit smoking drinking mm -hmm. start exercise start doing changing their daily right. habits and guess who lived three years and seven months longer mm -hmm. the person who didn't have health insurance and didn't right. get the bypass yeah so it's it's the daily habit mm -hmm. it's the 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 hygienist and the dentist can't fix what you refuse to do every day exactly i mean we we we, we can't so 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 it was the why mission Mm -hmm. The right. why mission is, is what got you. Yeah. So it sounds like you're yeah. kind of a more of a purpose driven person. Yeah, I would say so. I think I've just seen a lot in my clinical experience of what is working and what doesn't work as far as people's gum health. Um, I've seen a lot of people invest in expensive toothbrushes, but don't change their habits and they still have active gum disease and, and nothing really changes. So I think really enabling and empowering people to change those little little things um, is the most important thing. And I think Quip does a really good job of that. But what is Quip? The I mean, I mean the, the, the tube, mm -hmm. I mean, is it electric tube? Is it turns? Okay. Yeah. Do, so, do you so have one with you? I do. I have one in my pocket. Oh my um, gosh. Um, so it's an electronic toothbrush. Uh, there's one button and one mode. So you just turn it on by pressing the Q. So it's very simple, easy to use. Um, the mode is similar to a um, sensitive mode on other higher powered brushes. So it's around 15,000 brush strokes per minute. So it's going to be a lot more gentle than what you're used to if you are brushing with a high, higher powered toothbrush. And so then I buy, how much does this cost? That's $40. $40. And you buy it from your website, getquip.com? Mm -hmm. We're also in Target. So you can buy the brush from Target too. It's pronounced Target. Target. How? <laughs> where so did sorry. you hear Target? Where are you from? I must, you must have been traveling through Dallas, Texas, yeah. <laughs> where the yeah. uncouth call it uh, Target. Um, mm -hmm. so, so it's $40 mm -hmm. online. Yeah, online and in Target. Mm -hmm. At getquip.com yes. or $40 at Target. 
saying. Okay. Um, do any dentists or hygienists um, dispense this at the office? Are, yeah. are you seeing, is that very common or not we really do, common? Um, we do have a practice program. So it's our wholesale ordering program. So we send welcome kits, um, which have the uh, metal brush in it as well as a full size toothpaste. Um, so offices can buy a kit for $10. And then we encourage offices to give them out to patients or use them for marketing, um, new patient acquisition, and then the patient could get the brush from their dentist or hygienist. Okay, so if I buy this for forty dollars, but the but it's a subscription revenue mm-hmm. program. So mm-hmm. when you buy it at Target for forty bucks, how do you how are you signed up to get mm-hmm. new heads every? So 90 you days? go online and you would set up that subscription um, after you buy the brush. And, and and it's and how much is the subscription? It's five dollars per brush head, so we don't charge anything monthly or shipping. So you're just paying five dollars per brush head, and then we send a a fully charged battery with that too. A fully charged battery. Mm-hmm. Uh, show me, show yeah. me where that is. Let's pop it off. So this is the motor, mm-hmm. and underneath is a single AAA battery. So that's what AAA. I actually, it's a AAA mm-hmm. battery. Yep. Okay. Standard AAA okay. battery. That'll operate the brush for three months if you use two minutes twice a day. Mm-hmm. Say that again. So if you used your brush two minutes twice a day, the battery will last three months. And so when the battery dies, that's when you should change your brush head out anyways. So you nice. can change both the brush head and the battery. So then, so then it's not a, you're not dinging the credit card $5 every month. No. You just ding it every- Once every three months. So four times a year, every, every quarter, yeah. Yeah. you send a new brush head Mm-hmm. And a AAA battery? Yes. Mm-hmm. And that includes the cost of shipping and everything. See, my Irish dentists don't know a AAA because they go to AA meetings. You know, <laughs> I, I've heard of AA, but not what's the oh. third A for? <laughs> it's Alcoholics Anonymous of uh, anti plaque. <laughs> and uh, so, um, so, um, so every three months for just five bucks. Yeah. So it's a really affordable so way. So you can mail them a new brush and a battery and mail it to their house for mm-hmm. five bucks? Yep, a new brush head and battery. We also have a and toothpaste. And postage? Yeah. Yeah, that's everything included. I mean, how the, hell, how the hell can you send someone a toothbrush, a battery, mail it in an envelope and a stamp for five bucks? It's a big part of Quip's mission, right? We, we knew if we charge a lot for a brush head subscription, people won't use it. And if they don't use it, that defeats the point. So like, it's huh. a big part of Quip. Like the whole design, everything about it was in trying to encourage those healthy habits. And we want to make it easy to do the right thing. So if patients get the brush head delivered to their house, they're more inclined to use it than being requested to go pick it up somewhere, right? So it's all part of the model. Like everything, every aspect of Quip is by design to try and help improve those habits. And that's what really motivated you was the yeah, why, the absolutely. habit, the purpose. Exactly. Because would you rather do four quads of, of root plane curatage or have someone brush and floss? I would love to not do four quads of SRP. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, 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 that is truly amazing. So um, what other things do you believe in in the home care? I mean, like floss, mouthwash. Yeah. What, 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 what do you guys believe in? What, what, do you, what, do you, what, is, what is Quip seeing in their data? I think right now we obviously have our brush, like you mentioned before, for plaque removal. We also have our toothpaste. Um, our toothpaste and our brushes are ADA accepted. So our toothpaste, um, you can add on to that brush head subscription if you'd like. Um, it's an extra $5 once every three months. Okay, so on your website, tell me what I'm seeing. So yeah, that's the adult starter set that includes the $40 electric toothbrush as well as the three month supply of their mint toothpaste. Um, as Elisa mentioned, it's a fluorinated toothpaste. It has xylitol and no SLS. And SLL, SLS is sodium lauryl sulfate, mm-hmm. and and you don't like that because it's not so much we don't like it. We just that was something that was requested when we were um, doing research. Is that's an irritant for some people, so we didn't want to include it if it was going to keep people from using the fluoride paste. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the scientists that I've talked to over the years, um, a lot of people believe it's associated with canker sores. In saying that, they don't know what a canker sore is. So it might be some autoimmune thing, but a lot of individual people do not want SLS because sodium lauryl sulfate, they think it causes canker sores. And um, um, so what else do we know about canker sores? A lot of people also associate with acidic foods like grapefruit juice, uh, tomato sauce. They say when I eat, I'm Italian, when I eat mom's special pasta, I get canker sores. Another thing we hear though a lot is that they outgrow them. You hear a lot of people say, oh, I was plagued with them when I was a baby in my 20s and 30s, but now that I'm 
50 or 60, it's not a problem anymore. So, so you got the fluoride, yep. you got not an on SLS, no SLS, and you got, um, um, so that's the starter pack. And, and then it's interesting because you're designing the toothpaste to run out at three months, the battery to run out at three months, because the most important thing is you have to replace the toothbrush bristle after 90 days, mm -hmm. or you're just slugging slurry around. You're right. not prying off the plaque mm -hmm. pellicle. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so what else on, on the website about that? So do you have, uh, so do you sell floss and what are your thoughts are on the floss? Um, as a hygienist, I love floss. We don't currently have floss as part of the subscription. Um, right now it is just our brush. Um, we do have a kid's brush, so that's another product we have. Um, and then our paste. So I, I want to, uh, I think this is the cutest part of it. You have an electric couple set mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and it's so bizarre because, um, I, you know, I mean, I see this all the time where, okay, they're a man and wife, they kiss, they've made children. But if you accidentally wake up and used your spouse's toothbrush, <laughs> she's upset. So why is she upset? You just kissed her. Yeah. How come you can just kiss her good morning, but if you walk into the bathroom and use her toothbrush, why why does that uh why is that uh it doesn't make microbiological sense. And here's the other thing that really doesn't make sense. Now that they're now that DNA analysis is getting really high speed and fast. They're finding out that inside the herd, you have the same micro gut biome flora. So if we all live together in a house, and even though you're not my mom, dad, child, whatever, but living in a herd, sharing the same utensils, just living in the herd, it doesn't take long before they take a samples of your gut microbiome, your mouth microbiome, where we all got the same herd of diseases living in your mouth. So, so, are you saying that grandma and grandpa still have to use separate toothbrushes even though they're sharing yeah. the same I mean, I think, I think if they're using the same toothbrush, then it's like twice as much wear on the bristles and twice as much wear on the oh, battery. So having separate go. ones, it just helps keep it. What really embarrasses me for our profession is that when you cheat grandma every three months for gum disease, mm -hmm. And, and you've seen her for five years, every three months, and she's still finding gum disease, and you've never seen grandpa, I just asked you, were you, did you just skip biology class? Mm -hmm. I mean, no other, I mean, you can't treat, it's the same thing. You'll see a two-year-old kid that needs six pulpotomy chromosome crowns. Well, where do you think that came from? That factually tells you that mom, dad, babysitter, grandma, everybody interacting with this two-year-old kid has open, full mouth, blown decay. Mm -hmm. And then when that two-year-old kid um, needs to have six root canals and the, and the insurance doesn't cover, there's none, the, the newspaper is all like, well, there's no Medicaid provider. There's no, they, they didn't even address the question. Where was this baby born? Mm -hmm. Because if their mom and dad would have been hygienists and dentists and periodontists, that kid wouldn't have had any cavities at two. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's a herd disease. So the whole, you have to go from treating an individual patient to treating the herd. And the most motivated thing a human is motivated to do is reproduce and have offspring. So when you see that baby bump and she comes in your chair and you just sit with her for five minutes, say, I need to see your herd is grandma and grandpa live in town. Are they going to babysit it? Well, you can't have grandma wearing an upper denture, lower partial gum disease, you know, kissing, babysitting boo-boo. You need the whole herd. And so this couple set is, is very interesting. So if you would switch from treating the individual to herd immunity, it's the same. You always hear that in vaccines where people are saying, well, well, why do you care that my kid's not vaccinated? Your kid's vaccinated. He's never going to die of measles. So why are you all so uppity about my kid? Because you, you have, that's a legit question and you have to engage them because we have a lot of anti-vaxxers. And I think the reason we have so many anti-vaxxers is because so many people in the healthcare community marginalize them, just like, oh, you're bad and you're dumb and just address it. What it is, is if I'm vaccinated for measles, my kid's vaccinated for measles and you have measles, I still get the measles. I still have hundreds of millions of measles viruses reproducing and infecting me and I'm gonna get really, really sick and it's, it's gonna take about two days for my vaccinated immune system to say, hey, we got a problem here. We got a mounted defense and yeah, and it's gonna mount a defense and we're all gonna live. 
but I just went through a measles war for 10 days. I didn't die because I'm vaccinated, but I still had the war. And dentistry needs to, and we need to start explaining to everybody how vaccines work in a herd. And remember that dentistry works in a herd. And I think it's very um, amazing that you guys have an electric couple set because the disease is a herd disease and everybody in the house has got to get on the program of brushing two minutes a day twice a day and changing their bristles every 90 days what did you want to add to that i oh um just what you're saying about the whole house that's why we have our kids brush now is because um we found that kids want to brush like their parents so if their parents are having really good oral care habits the kids want to be involved and make it kind of more of a family um situation every morning and every night so our kids brush actually looks a lot like our adult brush it's got a smaller brush head um and then the handle is like what is it rubber grippy rubber so it's um better to hold and yeah so that was an interesting concept she just talked about because mm -hmm. when you study well let, let's talk about um uh, beauty things like in some cultures uh the girls shave their eyebrows so why would a little girl shave her eyebrows? Because her mom did. Mm -hmm. um, some countries like America, girls shave their legs. Mm -hmm. Why? Because her mom did. In other countries, there's no shaving the legs. But what we do know is this, that the kid almost always emulates the mom's personal hygiene. So if the mom uses mouthwash, the kid will. If the mom doesn't, the kid won't. Same with deodorant, shaving legs, shaving. So dads don't seem to be as influential. It seems to be about 80%. So that's another thing you got to tell baby bump because when she has a baby, it's like the most important mm -hmm. mission that she's on. And it's like, if the baby doesn't see you brush and floss, mm -hmm um then it's not um if if you don't use deodorant the baby won't use deodorant uh, you know it's all a mother thing right and and when you see that baby bump they're most motivated to change behavior i mean they just change their whole world mm -hmm. um because the baby so are you uh what are you a fan of tongue scraping is that do you believe in that oh. do you think it's not necessary me personally um this has nothing to do with quit but i i use a tongue scraper yeah I just notice a difference. I mean, you see it. It's one of the most visual things. I think that you can see physical like bacteria coming off of your tongue. Um, so I do it every morning and every night. So you tongue scrape twice a day. Yeah. Do you use a, a mouthwash? I don't actually. I um, I have never really used a mouthwash. I've tried all of them, um, but I I personally don't. And it's not because I've told patients to use them before. I just personally don't. Yeah. And the brushes do have a tongue scraper on the back too. Like Let that's, me see. that's something that was by design, like something we mm -hmm. acknowledge a lot of patients wanted to do. Was, was so that's a tongue scraper. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I did not know that. I learned something off my own podcast. Yeah. <laughs> huh. So is it say quip uh, either way? No, it's <laughs> that is, that is, I love the logo quip. It really is. So that's a tongue scraper. So are mm -hmm. you are you a tongue scraper? I absolutely use it. Yeah, I I um, use the back of the quip after you finish. So it's the two minute timer. When you're done, I scrape the tongue. And what about floss? Um, what what are your thoughts on floss? It's very a lot of thoughts on floss. It's very important to floss. <laughs> well, well, let's hear, hear your thoughts. Yeah, on floss. I think it's I think it's uh, neglected a lot of time. I, I feel like people don't understand that they're missing a large part of the tooth when they're only brushing. Um, so I think just patient education is really important when it comes to floss because a lot of people undermine how important it is for your gum health and and incipient cavities and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, for for posterior teeth, it's a third of the surface. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't yeah. floss, you miss a third. I, I know a lot of dentists. Um, they'll never agree on whether you should floss before or after. I think that, I think it's two separate camps. Yeah. Which camp are you on? I am on the camp of flossing before brushing. Um, the only reason, and this is just my own personal opinion, is I feel like you're taking off you're taking off plaque right from in between those surfaces. So I feel like if you're brushing with a fluoride base, it lets the fluoride ions hit the enamel when the plaque isn't there. So if you maybe brush beforehand and the plaque is still in those spots that would have been reached by floss, the fluoride might not be hitting that spot of the tooth. That's and what do you thoughts. what do you think about um water picks? I like water pick. I think it's a it's a good tool. It doesn't replace flossing, um, in my opinion. Um, but I think it's really great for patients with implants or bridges, like who may have a hard time with a floss sweater or if they have dexterity issues. I think it's a it's a really good tool to help irrigate the pockets. 
Now, I don't have any data on this because if you put hidden cameras in people's bathrooms and showers, mm -hmm. they like, there's like laws against that and stuff. But yeah. I am, but I really believe um, from just my own aunts and all asking everybody, strangers on airplanes, that and patients, that if they brush, you know, the, the two minute thing, I mean, they, they, don't, they don't know what two minutes is. It's mm -hmm. brush, 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 brush. But a lot of times when they go in the shower mm -hmm. and in the morning, the hot water, some, lots of people just like to stand there in the shower mm -hmm. for a minute or two and wake up. I, I've i always tried to motivate brush yeah. in the shower. Absolutely. And and like even like the ones that use a water pick, the ones mm -hmm. that buy it, use it and quit using it. I'll say, well, why did you quit using it? I go, God, it makes a mess. There's spots all over my mirror. It's yeah. on the counter. I mean, that's something you should do in a barn. Yeah. I said, well, move it into the shower. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think people who I should shave in the shower mm -hmm. i brush and floss yeah. and i do everything i do in the shower and i think um that's just so funny to me because when i joined quip that wasn't a thing that i ever considered people did like i always brush like in front of the, the sink in the mirror um and then i would attend my first conference my first trade show and so many people were asking me oh can you brush for the shower like with the quip like can you brush in the shower and that was a very it's funny that you mentioned that because that's something i've learned since working at quip how common and regular of a request that is um, it's, it's just interesting to me. That, well, you know, but it when makes you're, sense. When like you're sitting at the sink, you're, you're in a hurry. Okay, I, I have to do this task. I have to brush. I have to floss. I got to get my socks. I got to find my dental uniform. I got to. But the, so you're in task mode. But when you're in the shower, it's really when you're having a coffee. When you, when you wake up in your morning coffee, you don't like slam your coffee and run out the door. You sit down and you, re, you enjoy your coffee. I do anyway, and because um, I'm Irish and I gotta, you know, I gotta <laughs> repair what I did last night. But the same thing with the shower. I, I think people just, I think most people when they get in the shower, it's a minute or two of just relaxing under the water. Yeah. So yeah, I think you like this. Then it's interesting you bring that up because we have every brush comes with this. This is like our we call it our mirror mount it's got a suction cup strip in the back so you can mount it to your mirror or the tile in your shower right it so is a water that works it, it's a suction cup strip so it actually just push it on either the, the tile in your bathroom so like in your shower or the mirror really and it'll stick there and it's that it was intended to be like a, a visual reminder to brush your teeth right um and so as i mentioned a lot of patients ask or i got a, the question a lot can you use in the shower it is a waterproof brush so we encourage patients to like stick it in the tile in their shower to motivate them to remind them to brush their teeth so. well that the first thing i thought about that is you know i raised four boys and um they we always had to have different colors of toothbrushes because they didn't like it when their brother brushed their teeth and um so that's pretty neat in the shower because you know everybody's different heights yeah. you know so you know if you put yours on the upper right the wife could put on the upper left the kid would be lower I, I could I could see five six different toothbrushes just based on height weight you know because it it is a weird thing where people don't want to use someone else's toothbrush you know it's a very personal thing even though there's no microbiome evidence that you know I I mean and you even you even um same thing with dogs you realize that when you get a dog or a cat a microbiologist can figure it out. Do you realize that they can take your they can take samples from your gut microbiome or your mouth and say you have a dog and you have a cat so they're doing all the dna analysis so, so like um streptococcus mutans that causes decay well where does that come from it came from cats and they know it was from the fertile crescent area where modern day iraq fifteen thousand years ago and that 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 their bacteria jumped into you and for you it's a pathogen and for a kitty cat um it wasn't and when you get um when you get a new dog or a cat i mean you 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 you're living in a barn we all live in a zoo and we didn't really know that before they started doing dna analysis but now they realize you live in a zoo by the way do any of you have dogs or cats not in New York, no. Do you? Parents have a dog, so it's my dog. I consider okay. her my dog. But... And honestly, you're on you're on camera. Did you ever kiss that dog? No. Oh gosh, no. But I'm really? Hygienist, like so in the I'm mouth? Okay. I would kiss like the, the head of the dog, but not like when I'm oh, like like yeah. I'd kiss the dog's head. Yeah. But I've well, seen, I've I would. That's like really common. Like oh, people do it all the time. Oh my god. It's, they're so cute. Yeah. My grandkids, they they kiss the dog. Yeah. Ten times. I don't a like day. when people let the dog lick their face and mouth like that. Yeah. That's but nice. you don't have to but but that's what's really interesting so you know you don't kiss the dog but you pick up their microbiome you 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 share utensils how many times have you seen a mother of the baby take the food they just yeah. migrate yeah. 
well that is a hundred million bacteria <laughs> and then you stick it in the baby's mouth and then you want to know well how why and so then so that's why i'm telling you when the baby needs eight pulpotomies and chrome still crowns yeah. that baby's raising a herd of rampant decay yeah. and then that's what needs to be addressed so th this is really a lot of design neat features i like the fact that it sticks to the wall the shower because everybody can place it in different places of the shower yeah. I, I, it's, um, what, what, else, what else is on that website that my homies? Well, I guess the other thing I didn't tell you is like this mirror mount also doubles as a travel cover. So when you're going to travel somewhere, it locks in place. You just throw it in your bag and you're good to go. So because it's battery operated, you don't need to bring any chargers or anything. Like that's another cool aspect of the site as well. You've got the brush, the cover, and the, um, the brush head, of course. Well, so if they go to getquip.com, what are all they going to find? Uh, we have all the different colors, our different products. We have our both our metal brush, our plastic brush, and our kids brush now. See, I follow you on Instagram. There you go. So you're uh, big on uh, Instagram. We My are. My God, you got yeah. eighty eight thousand followers on Instagram. <laughs> Holy moly, that is amazing. I only got 15,000. <laughs> I need to add a toothbrush to my website. <laughs> um, that is uh, amazing. And then uh, on Twitter, you are... It's really cool because we get like tweets and uh, Facebook messages and emails all the time from patients who are like, I'm actually excited about brushing again. Well, you should. we like, should take a selfie and uh, and uh, tweet it out on uh, I follow you so yeah. they're um, at get quip mm -hmm. um, very good um, so so what were you saying what, what else you got excited about it's this? just it's a, it's a neat thing because like I don't know how often people get excited about brushing their teeth and so at quip like it's always fun to see like internally we'll share like you know tweets and things that we really like that people sign in and it happens so regularly where they're like this is the first time or like for their kids brush when we really recently launched the kids brush um, like all the outpouring so of you have a social kids brush media now? messages yeah as of like two weeks ago yeah. Yeah. do you have one with you um, in our booth we didn't bring one okay. with us here and, and and what was the reason the the, the um, kids and the adults? Is um, it just size? It's yeah. So it's actually the same like length as the adult brush, but the the brush head is a little smaller, and uh, the the handle itself is got a softer grip, and it's made of like a rubberized plastic. So it's a little bit easier for the kids to hold. And then the colors are different as well. They're kid friendly colors. Kid friendly colors. Um, <laughs> See, that, yeah. that, that was in part by design as well. Like we did a lot of, you know, user research and like a lot of sort of like focus groups and stuff to identify like what would kids want in a kid's brush? You know, like do they want lights and do they want, you know, different like princesses or what, what, what would actually resonate with kids? And one of the learnings we took, one of the takeaways we found was that kids seem to really want a brush that looked like their parents because they wanted to be like their parents. And so it was really eye opening and it was cool because, um, you're getting to see kids excited about getting a brush that looks like their mom or dad's. Yeah. yeah so remember the, the thing most misunderstood about statistics is if I'm holding, um, a pool ball in my hand, statistics can't tell you which ball I'm holding, but if you know, there's only nine balls, it can statistically tell you the probability. I can't tell you what your child's going to do, but I can tell you most likely what he's going to do is what the parents are doing. You always have that individual kid where both parents aren't readers. They never did their homework. They dropped out of school and their kid became, you know, a scientist, mm -hmm. but that's not usually what happens. Usually your mom and dad, um, did their homework and then when you were a little kid coming home and they helped you do your homework and you that that's the more probable approach um, to get a kid to do is you know math and reading and all that kind of stuff so they're gonna do what the parents do the home care mm -hmm. um, and um, that seems to be the most important and, and I I was a little I had mixed feelings about the last controversy in toothpaste where there were some sparkles in it and some of the hygienists were finding these sparkles didn't go away and they found them in a gum tissue because the way I was looking at the sparkles, like, okay, the trade off of that is what if the sparkles was the only thing that made the kid want to brush his teeth because he liked the flavor or, uh, you know, it's kind of like the Flintstone vitamin. It's like maybe he only ate it because it was, looked like a Flintstone dinosaur and had a little candy <laughs> taste to it. That's why I eat them. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so with, with kids, um, because what I, what I learned the most, when I had just got out of school, they had just discovered tooth whitening. And it was a company out of Arkansas, um, Omni International, and it was carbamide peroxide, 10% um, thixotropic deal. And what I noticed right out of the gate that the people who bleached their teeth 
Now they noticed their teeth and now they started to like their teeth. So now they started to brush and floss and come in and get their teeth clean regularly. And what, and what is that black hole? So once, you know, so they had all these broken teeth, silver fillings, cracks, never looked at it, didn't matter. Once they started whitening their teeth, they're in front of their hair going like that and saying, what's that, what's that? So with humans, they're either all in or they're all out. It's like you either own your own bowling ball or you didn't go bowling last year. <laughs> if you went bowling last year, you probably own your own ball. Same thing with the lake. You know, you either own your boat and go to the lake 10 times during the summer or you don't own a boat and you didn't even go to the lake. It's like there's no, with humans, they're either all in or all out. And getting them to change their habits, I mean, you know, you got to address the herd. Like I wouldn't recommend anybody buy some one thing for themselves in the house. It's like, let's get the whole family. Let's, you know, we're, we're not going to get, we're, if we have three kids, we're not going to get Amy to floss without the other two. It's like the whole herd. And if the whole herd's going to brush and floss and in, in the morning and at night, then the whole herd's going to do it. The whole herd's going to lower their pathological bacteria, strep and all this other stuff like that. So uh, it is, it's really um, with humans, motivation is everything. If you get them fun, just like you, you you like your job because you like the why, you like the purpose, and that's that's just how humans roll. If they don't like the why, it's like if they do things they don't like for money, they always burn out, quit, start drinking. You know, they they, they just fall apart. They they want to do things for money that they like. They don't want, and that's same with dentists. Dentists and hygienists burn out all the time because they find themselves doing, doing, you know, seeing eight patients a day for a cleaning and they don't like it anymore. So the question is, why do you not like it anymore? Why did you burn out? It's the why. Mm -hmm. So, so when you're 45 years old and you say, I don't want to do this anymore. Well, you, you need to figure out that why you need to figure that out because the truth is that, you know, that, that, that there's something wrong and it's probably fixable. Burnout is fixable. It's true. And that's, that's, that's equips all about the healthy habits. Like, and that's everything about the design and everything about the brush is trying to help pa patients who may have never brushed for two minutes, never brushed twice a day, never change their brush heads, do that stuff. So it's really like that message that you're describing resonates really well with Quip on our mission as well. So how long have you, how long has getquip.com been like, how long have you been? It's, it's been around for a little, a little over four years. Four years? A little over four years. Um, it's been the last few years is when it's really started to take off. And I think in large part because we had the ADA seal last year and then we got into the target stores nationwide and so like i think the culmination of like like all these patient you know happy patients and like the word of mouth and the ada seal and the target has kind of helped equip really okay, you both watch shark tank right of course so start asking course. yourself shark tank questions what, what what's your next you're in target are you trying to get in walmart walgreens see what, i what, mean what's, I, what's I, I really don't know <laughs> that's a lot of the things that um then you know like what mr wonderful would say yeah uh, you're dead to me you're dead to me <laughs> I, I really yeah i really don't know a lot of that stuff <laughs> but um i know like one thing that we're, we're really trying to do is and we're really excited to do is start going out to more of these dental conferences and trade shows and like working with the hygienist dentist assistants office managers and like getting them to not only understand about quip and like, learn like learn about what we're offering but learn about like the cool stuff we're doing outside of the brush itself like we have our monthly newsletter that goes out to all of our patients where we're informing you know all of our million plus subscribers about oral health habits and hygiene recommendations and things like that so, so if you go to dental town mm -hmm. or hygiene town you can't go to ortho town unless you're in ortho town so i own ortho town i'm not allowed to go on the site <laughs> um, you, I, so if you go to the search bar quip um there will it will pull up all the threads mm -hmm. to talk about quip um you got some cool videos on your site you should go yeah. on yeah just you being a hygienist yeah and answer all those questions on dental town hygiene town and then those videos you have so when you open a youtube video when you hit share it has the link but the next button over is embed. You tip that and you got the code. So on Dental Town, there's a little YouTube button. So when you're answering a question, you can hit the YouTube button, drop the embed, and then there's the videos. Because I mean, you really, um, at this convention, you really increase my understanding of everything you're doing. 
and um, you guys should do that online. Yeah, we're excited to. I, my first job out of grad school was to work as a practice management consultant for dentists in Dallas. And I did that for about four and a half years. And which, which firm was that? This is M-Way and Associates. It's what? M-Way and Associates is a like a boutique firm in Plano, Texas. N-Y? M-Way, like Michael White and Associates. Here, um, here, I'll make you pull up the website. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I Dental Town was huge for me. <laughs> like, I frequented like the Ask a Consultant forum all the, all the time. It was very, very helpful. And so, when it came to like working at Quip, I started about five or six months ago. I knew like Dental Town is something I really want to push for and make sure that we're as involved with Dental Town as I was when I was working at the consulting firm. So, wow, that's yeah. awesome. So, do you ever get on? Uh, so, we have Hygiene Town. Yes, I'm a part of Hygiene Town. Yeah, but it's really bizarre because there's um, 56,000 hygienists on Dental Town, too. Mm -hmm. 56,000 of that 250,000. Um, so, uh, so um, have you been posting on Hygiene Town about this? Or? No, we've been, we just created We've just account. started. Yeah, we just so. started. Or like, it's a work in progress. But so, so tell me, <laughs> so you're, you cut your teeth at M. White and Associates. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what, what are they? Uh, so, they do tax accounting and consulting. And dentist, dentistry was one of their big niches that they started realizing there was a lot of potential for. And so, I got my master's in healthcare management. And when I was in grad school, I was recommended um, a role as a consultant consultant here. And so when I started at MY Associates, like the, the main thing that they asked me to do, uh, one of the things I started doing a lot of was helping dentists start their own practice. And so that's where obviously dental time became like a second home. Like I was like everything I would want to recommend and ask and like I, I would want to make sure that the, everything I was suggesting and recommending made sense, and, I, and a lot of that came from you know everything I read off Dental Town. So um, a lot of it was really just like from my perspective, from my role, was was making sure that we kept our clients accountable, keeping things on a timeline, making sure that we were you know, coordinating with, with vendors and kind of just helping them with the process of starting their own practice, and opening their door, which is ultimately what gave me the entrepreneurial bug myself and kind of drove me to, I think, you know, quip in the startup, the startup toothbrush company. So, yeah. And what advice um, would you give um, hygienists? Oh, just in general, or, or yeah, in general, and, and and we quit because how many oh. how many hygienists do you run into? Um, a lot, especially at these shows, I run into a lot of hygienists. Um, so a lot of hygienists only know themselves, and maybe yeah. there's one other hygienist yeah. in the office, and maybe she has two friends from right. hygiene school. She says, but you you talk to tons of hygienists, right? <laughs> and I find that a lot are really interested in my position at Quip because it's a non clinical position, um, and I've been really surprised at how many hygienists are trying to get involved in things outside of clinical, which I think is really cool. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunities out there, so it's been cool to get a talk to people and network and and see that. But do you think they want to get out of clinical because they don't? like their setting they don't like their job is it the mm -hmm. is it the office the the management yeah. the, the the patients why why mm -hmm. Uh, well, why do you think they want to get out of them? Um... I think it's a combination or it can be one of many things. I think hygiene is a very physical job. Um, so it comes with a lot of aches and pains that can build up over time. Um, I also think a lot of um, hygienists know fairly early on if, if only clinical is something that they don't want to do forever. I think once you get into your practice and if you do have the entrepreneurial bug that you mentioned, it's hard to implement that in a practice if you're as a hygienist just kind of being on repeat on the hour every hour um and some people really like it so it's good it's a good fit for some people but um how many hygienists work for quip just me <laughs> just, just one <laughs> just one yeah and, and what do you and what do you do for quip i'm the dental community manager so chris and i are both on the dental marketing team um so our roles are really to grow out our provider network and market quip to them and are you marketing more to professionals yes. or consumers professionals so we have a separate consumer focused marketing team and then chris and i are the dental marketing team well, dental town and hygiene town. Yeah. And now what's bizarre is um there was that big lawsuit in um it was in Arkansas when a dentist when an orthodontist started adding hygienist. And sure enough, who didn't like that the most? The the dental society. And it's mm -hmm. like, why? I mean they're they yeah. and um so uh, so a lot of orthodontists are starting to realize that, you know, when you take out brackets and you see demineralization around, and then a lot of times when they're changing the wires, they think, God, this really needs plaque removal. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, do you think 
orthodontist? I mean, we're already we're, the, the, mm-hmm. the legal precedence. Do you, do you think orthodontist? Do you think your average orthodontist is going to have a hygiene department in ten years? I would hope so. I think it's plays such an important. I know I have, see yeah. you, you just, your first response was I hope so. Yeah, and hell, it was illegal up into just. A few yeah. months, you know, last year or something. That, that, yeah, that it would have to be implemented with like a general practice because you would need to obviously be doing your exams and stuff. But I think more of a hygiene focus in ortho would be awesome because I think that's something that also gets missed a lot um, of the time. Plaque removal is super important. Yeah. So, and that's one of the reasons clear aligners are taking mm-hmm. off because you can tease your brush and floss when you take your clear aligner out and brush your right. brace. But then you had to want to know how many of those boys are gonna put their clear aligner back in. I mean, when I put mm-hmm. fix 80% of braces is still arch wire. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody talks about clear aligners and Visalign, but it's really only 20% of the market. Um, so it's a trade off because you're you're a boy, you're not motivated, you don't, you know, you're not gonna wear your aligner. So I, I put in fixed, but then if you're not brushing floss, I take it off, I got these mm-hmm. demineralization. So then you say, well, then we should do Invisalign. And there are some orthodontists who only do Invisalign. Right. But then the trade-off is it's easier to brush and floss, but you got to get Billy Bob to wear mm-hmm. his darn aligners. Right. There's more of a compliance aspect with aligners than there are with brackets. Yeah. Any other thoughts for hygienists? Oh, I would just say like take, if you're looking to get out of the op, I guess specifically, just take every opportunity you have. Like I, I would help out at trade shows when I was in hygiene school and made a lot of great connections. And I would, um, I wrote for today's RDH for a little bit. So just trying to network and push yourself out there. And who support. is today's RDH? That's Kara RDH. That's what? Kara RDH. So Kara Vavrosky, she she has today's RDH um, and dental hygiene with Kara. I just posted um, one of her articles the other day on that um, that um, USC admission scandal. Yeah. yeah. I guess there was a, a dentist a, or a something dentist yeah. that was, is, showed up in that scandal and yeah. I, I always have mixed feelings because if i if i post that the dentists all want to know about it and they all talk about it but then you it's that 80 20 you always get 20 percent of your tribe saying hey why did you call out yeah a dentist that did something bad and i i really i almost i never do it outside of dental i mean i don't do it on facebook or right. twitter or instagram or things like that but the reason i do it on the inside is because i i don't want my homies living in a bubble Mm-hmm. I mean, I want Dennis to know that if you cheat Medicaid, you might get arrested and go to jail. If you right. do weird stuff, I mean, so there's 211,000 Americans have an active license today to practice dentistry in the United States. Mm-hmm. So they're constantly running into the law. Right. But she she called him out. I didn't have the guts to, <laughs> but I re, I reposted yeah. her article about that. Um, tell is she a friend of yours? She yeah we we're tell, tell close, her to come yeah. on the show. Oh um, yeah, I, I, sure. I love it. A lot of people think, well, I didn't think you'd want me on the show because I'm with a, another magazine. It's like. I, I've never met a dentist that only reads Dental Town. Mm-hmm. They right. every dentist and hygienist I know reads. How, how many how many magazines do you? Oh read? my gosh, probably like ten. I like, know, yeah. I know. So <laughs> all these people say, "Well, I write for Dentistry Day." Yeah, like who cares? Right. Who cares? I mean, if you're right, if if you're doing anything in dentistry that helps my my homies, mm-hmm. I'm all for you. Yeah. Uh, I don't care um, about stuff. But um, today's RDH. That's funny you said that because I just posted her yesterday. Um, yeah, if you're trying to get your kid into USC or Harvard um, do not buy a broker uh, that's uh, that's not going to go over well they have to do good on their SAT scores uh, by themselves but but well, the one thing I really um, that she said that you really had to think about is you start doing trade booths mm-hmm. and I always call dentistry the Hotel California once you check in you'll never leave <laughs> because yeah. you go to all these conventions mm-hmm. and you see someone working um, at a uh, den mat mm-hmm. And five or 10 years later, that didn't work out there over at Kerr or Ira Claire or Danaher. I mean, they always stay in dentistry. So dentistry is must be a really cool profession mm-hmm. because once you check in, you never really leave. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of a lot of um, people in the dental industry that thought um, they didn't like it or it was too hard or it wasn't profitable, it was too hard to make a living, they left that industry and went into something else. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, they're back in a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They thought that grass is not greener on this. I mean, if right. you can't make it and find success and happiness and money in dentistry well what what industry are you going to go to yeah i mean if you can't make it here this is kind of like a protected game reserve Mm -hmm. and if you can't make it in dentistry my god good luck in real estate condos cars construction Mm -hmm. i mean good good luck in in mining and agriculture it's you know so any any other advice i don't know do you have any advice 
for anyone? I mean, I'll just say from my two cents, like I'm working on the marketing team at Quip, that having Elisa's involvement with like the marketing side of things and making sure that the messages that we're, we're relaying to professionals is, isn't just like the right way to say it, but like we're saying the right thing, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and having the hygiene perspective is so valuable that I would encourage, like Elisa was saying, that the hygienist that, who may be interested, who may never even considered it, who might be interested in helping with any of the slew of dental companies out there, like find their voice is imperative and helpful. And so I would strongly encourage them to like reach out. If there's like a, a dental related company that's outside the op that might be of interest to them, like find out if they could use your help. Cause more often than not, I bet they could. So. And tell your uh, founder and CEO, Simon Enever, Enever, mm -hmm. Enever. Does he go by Enever or Enever? <laughs> it's Enever. Huh? You should go by Enever because E is one of those uh, internet words. Yeah. Uh, there was remember E Explorer. E never. There was all these E. e when, when the internet popped out in like 1994, half the internet companies started with E. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, and Jeremy Krell is uh, Krell, your dentist from uh, Boston. He's on your team. Yeah, director of dental equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, tell tell both those guys they they, they should come on the show. Yeah, I'm happy to. Tell them you sure. just warmed up the water <laughs> and then uh, made way for them. But uh, thank you so much. No, thank you Likewise. for coming on the show. And really it was an, it was an honor and a privilege. Yeah, the a podcast pleasure. interview, you guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.